Fox 2 presents Hancock and Kelly. And good Sunday morning to you. Welcome to Hancock and Kelly on Fox 2, where we dive into the top issues of the week. On the right is John Hancock. Good morning. And on the left this morning in for Michael Kelly is Braxton Payne. Good morning. Morning to you, Braxton. Thanks for being here. I'm Andy Banker. It is November the 20th, 2022. Camel X Day, right? Camel X Day. Now. On the agenda this morning, Trump in 2024. The former president is running again. Can he really win the GOP nomination? In our quote of the week, Missouri Republican Senator Josh Hawley says, the Republican Party is dead. Does that mean turning away from his ally, Donald Trump? Another school shooting leaves three University of Virginia students dead. How many wake-up calls can America ignore? And breaking up the concert ticket monopoly. Is Taylor Swift about to take on Ticketmaster along with Braxton Payne? <laughs> Should the U.S. government intervene? First up, the Mar-a-Lago moment. Former President Donald Trump announces another run for the White House, making it official before a crowd of supporters in Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and my fellow citizens, America's comeback starts right now. That was the beginning of it all, but the, the event seemed a bit underwhelming by Donald Trump's standards. There seems to be more focus on who's going to run against him. That list is headed by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. John, could Donald Trump win the Republican nomination? Could he even win the Florida primary if DeSantis is running against him at this point? Well, he won't beat DeSantis in Florida, but he, he could be the nominee, especially if there's a multiple number of candidates, credible candidates in the field. Now, I do sense that there is a movement away from Donald Trump within the rank and file Republican electorate. He's still going to have his strong, ardent supporters. But it seems to me that more and more Republicans have come to the opinion that as a party, we need to move on beyond Donald Trump. And I do think, I don't think Donald Trump can win a national election, but he could be the Republican nominee. And that's if there are four or five or six candidates splitting right. the rest of the vote and he has that hardcore 30 Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see if the party can kind of coalesce behind somebody. I don't know that Ron DeSantis is it. I mean, he's not ever really been tested uh, in, in a kind of the, the crucible of a national election. So uh, I think that remains to be seen. There's a lot of moving parts between now and, and 2024. Still Trump's nomination to lose, you think, Braxton? Or is, this a, that, is there this sense out there that the Republican Party has moved on? Yeah, DeSantis is definitely, I think, the front runner. Um, because you look at Missouri, the head-to-head -head polls just came out this weekend. Yeah. He was up by nine percentage points against Donald Trump in Missouri. Uh, he is the front runner. But he has not been tested by the national media, which is going to be very tough to do. I mean, you saw it with Sarah Palin. Uh, once they get tested by the national media, we'll see if he's able to continue that. He hasn't been tested by Donald Trump either, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, other candidates in 2016, like Marco Rubio, were the front runner and the leader before the yes. debate started. Yes, and if you take Donald Trump aside, who really is a unique figure in American politics, uh, first time presidential candidates, particularly Republican first time presidential candidates, usually don't do so well. Romney was our nominee in 12. He had run in, in 08. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, John McCain was our nominee in 08. He had run in 2000. And, and so it, it is somewhat rare for a first-time candidate to emerge and, and grab the nomination and win the White House. Yeah, but he's seen as, like, Donald Trump light by a lot of people. He's more palatable to the average Republican voter. They like his policies. He takes on, you know, the liberals, as they all say. You know, he's, he's very... Uh, flamboyant and a lot of the things that he does he talks like Donald Trump he does the hand motions like Donald Trump which I'm sure he's gotten trained on but uh, he will be the front runner but it comes down to it, the Republican caucus in Iowa which will be really interesting he'll have the ground game Trump has never relied on that type of typical ground game so he'll have those typical things in New Hampshire and, and then Florida and South Carolina Missouri Republican Senator Josh Hawley has been mentioned as a possible presidential candidate. He has been a Donald Trump ally during his first term in the Senate. But prior to the Trump announcement, he told reporters he would not run for the White House. He also did not endorse another Trump run, saying only that he wasn't going to tell Mr. Trump what he should do. Still, Hawley has had much to say about Republican failures 
in the midterm elections less than two weeks ago. Our quote of the week is from the senator who said, I think this election was the funeral for the Republican Party. The party as we have known it is dead. Braxton, he says Republicans need to build something new. This is from one of Donald Trump's biggest allies in Congress. What does he mean? Is he moving away from Trump? Uh, sure. I mean, Josh Hawley's an uh, empty suit, in my opinion. He is a ladder climber. He just wants to be president. It, he's taking every single step he can do. I mean, I don't even think he lives in Missouri anymore. He lives in Virginia. But the Republican Party is dead in the old sense of the fashion. Trump did that in 2016. So this is not new. He's not saying anything that's breaking news. It's all, you know, it happened in 2016 with Donald Trump. I mean, the Republican Party is no longer what they used to be. Maybe Hawley isn't referring to Donald Trump and it's Mitch McConnell because he just voted against him for the Senate uh, minority leadership. Post, he did, as did, uh, as did Eric Schmidt, yeah. our, our new freshman new senator. senator. Yeah, you know, the Republican Party is cha has changed. I think it's a mistake to say it's dead. Look, if we nominate bad candidates, we're going to get beat. I don't think you can lay this defeat that we had in November or at the feet of Mitch McConnell uh, or Kevin McCarthy. Uh, and, and to a certain extent, maybe Donald Trump, because a lot of his endorsed candidates got defeated in states where we should have won. Uh, but the only thing, the biggest challenge the Republican Party has is to nominate candidates that can win elections. And it's not like the Democrats are providing us any great opposition. I mean, they, they've tried to hand us the midterms on a silver platter. U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland may have added fuel to the push for the GOP move to move on from President Trump, announcing, former President Trump, announcing the appointment of a special counsel to investigate Donald Trump. Based on recent developments, including the former president's announcement that he is a candidate for president in the next election, and the sitting president's stated intention to be a candidate as well, I have concluded that it is in the public interest to appoint a special counsel. The special counsel will look into any interference in the transfer of power after the 2020 presidential election highlighted by supporters of Donald Trump attacking the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2020. The special counsel will also look into Mr. Trump keeping classified documents at his home in Florida after he left office. What do you think the impact of all of this will be, John, on the 2024 campaign and Mr. Trump's ability to avoid prosecution? Well, what we know about special counsels is that that work can take a very long time. And uh, it's not a given that there's going to be any resolution to these investigations before certainly primary season of early 2024. So we'll see. I was uh, a little surprised at the choice of Jackie Smith to be the special counsel. I, Remember him as the Hall of Fame tight end for the St. Louis football Don't Cardinals. Don't think we're talking about the same person. It was not the same guy. <laughs> Different Jackie Smith. So, uh, you know, the special counsel's office, I think, will be thorough. Donald Trump's got a lot of legal headaches uh, on his hands. He's got the investigation in Georgia. He's got the civil lawsuit by the Attorney General of New York. Uh, he's got the sexual, uh, sexual assault lawsuit uh, civilly pending. I mean, he's got a lot of legal balls in the air. And... Will that matter to Republican voters? It remains to be seen. One thing John didn't mention, but you're hearing from the right, is that this is just weaponizing the Department mm -hmm. of Justice to get Trump, making it a political yeah. the, the point of the, the special counsel is to not make it political. And that is what Merrick Garland's doing. And Trump, it seems to be, you know, he's just, everything can bounce right off him. No matter what happens, he seems to come back. People just don't seem to care. Um, so we'll see if that is actually the case this time. But I think they, they did the right decision in, in appointing the special counsel to try to make it not political. But Trump will make everything political. Republicans do have this to celebrate. More than a week after the elections, it's finally been determined that they will take control of the House of Representatives. And they'll take it from Democrats. Speaker Nancy Pelosi has announced she's stepping aside from any leadership role in the House. We'll have a new Republican speaker and a very slim majority for Republicans in the Senate. What does that mean for President Biden in the final two years of his term, Braxton? It'll be interesting to see how he's able to govern. He was able to pass the bipartisan infrastructure bill with bipartisan support. Um, the, the Senate will be able to pass a bunch of uh, judges, which I think is very important to the base of Democrats. It's very important to the base of Republicans when Trump did it. 
Um, but it'll it'll be interesting to see if if Speaker McCarthy has really power over his own caucus, um, which is going to be very difficult to see. You know, the Freedom Caucus, the Marjorie Taylor Greens of the world, if they kind of go along with him. John, who's the next speaker, and can you really get a lot done with what a five to ten member majority? Maybe uh, Kevin McCarthy will be the speaker. He's got the support of most of his That's conference. Happen. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think it's going to happen. I hope that they maybe take a serious look at border security. I think there's enough bipartisan interest in that issue. You know, you think of the senator from Arizona, Mark Kelly, the Democrat, he's interested in securing the border. I think you could forge a governing majority on that issue, and that would be a significant one to tackle, but we'll see. Still to come on Hancock and Kelly, President Biden pushes his agenda overseas and another school shooting ravages the University of Virginia and its football program. What can and what should our government do about it?